it's Andy with Reverb, and today I'm building a mini pedal board to capture the essence of Neil Young's epic live guitar tones. I'm going to try to do it with three pedals or less, so let's check them out. By the late 70s, and more specifically with the live album Rust Never Sleeps, Neil Young had amassed an army of Fender and Magnetone amplifiers, effects, and custom electronics to create a sound that is unique, intense, and often on the verge of exploding. And while sheer stage volume is a huge part of it, there are three major components to his tone that you can thankfully find in pedal form right here on Reverb. Starting with the guitar, I think it's more important to have a Bigsby vibrato than the exact pickups that Neil has, which is a P90 in the neck and a Firebird mini humbucker in the bridge. Really, the Bigsby just gets the whole point across. And even if you have like a Tele with a Bigsby on it, you can still get some really convincing sounds once you get the effects in place. Let's start with the pedal that's really the foundation of the whole sound, and that's the Falcon from Crazy Tube Circuits. This one goes after those Fender Tweed Deluxe tones from the late 50s, and you can switch between 55 and 61, which gets into those cleaner brown face style sounds. And a great thing about these Tweed inspired overdrives like the Falcon, or other ones from Love Pedal or Catlin Bread, is that they absolutely nail the sag and compression that these low wattage amps give you and then you could just back off with your playing or roll back on the guitar's volume knob and it cleans up just with a little bit of grit. Let's move on to the next piece of the puzzle for recreating Neil's sound, and that's an outboard spring reverb unit. Neil uses the famous Fender 63 spring reverb, which actually has tubes inside there, but it is outboard, meaning it goes before the input of the amplifier. I happen to have a pedal you might have seen before, which is the Source Audio True Spring Reverb, which even has an outboard setting that mimics the same splash and characteristics of those outboard reverb units. Unlike the spring reverb you might have on your amplifier, an outboard unit really has a different feel, and you can really hear those springs getting a lot livelier, especially if you adjust the dwell or tone control, which is something that you normally don't have. You just have a mix control. <laughs> As you can tell, that dwell control is very powerful and it goes a long way. You could just dial in the right amount of drip 
too much and it sounds like a surf band. So it's really good to just use your ears and play around with that, the tone and the mix control to get the right amount of wetness. Let's move on to the final piece of the puzzle and that's Neil's Echoplex tone. Of course, I don't need an Echoplex here when I have the Catlin Bread Bell Epoch Deluxe. This delay pedal covers every stage of the vintage EP3 Echoplex, including the preamp, which, like the spring unit, adds up to contribute more gain and grit in his signal chain. It's not very likely that Neil is changing the head spacing on his Echoplex in between songs, and this is evident when you hear the delay time in songs like Cortez the Killer versus Rockin' in the Free World. It's more of just sort of a texture, and since it's only about one or two repeats, it doesn't really matter that it's not exactly in time with the song he's playing. So let me show you how I dialed this in, and I've pretty much matched it to that live version of Cortez from the Weld album. Well, there's the essentials if you're looking to put some live Neil Young tones into your rig. And you can find all the pedals mentioned here today right here on Reverb. Also, be sure to leave some comments below on your favorite live Neil Young tune. I'll see you next time.